Uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have just launched their own website called Sussex.com after the late Queen banned them from using their Sussex, ti Sussex titles. The couple are expecting to start selling Sussex merchandise very soon. Well, I know this to be true, and I think they've, they're treading a very dangerous line here because they, they aren't allowed to trade on their royal titles mm. and the Sussex name. But the problem they have is Sussex is technically their surname. Yes. So, are I you going to take that away from them? I have to admit that it's a little bit of a kind of minefield. Do you think it's a bit I t It's a bit <laughs> get out. <laughs> and, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not indulging in that nonsense today. And I don't know about this because it seems to be a kind of like kind of conglomeration of all the different things put together through one website. So it's the Archwell Foundation, the production company, all the charities and everything else that they, they do. It's all in one place. Makes sense to me. I'm surprised they haven't done it before, but I, it, I don't really know how they're going to get away with not trading on the titles and the name where you literally call it sustenance.com. So what are they going to be selling then? Mugs? Well, I presume it'll be things like mugs because <laughs> I, they, I mean, they've nothing else of use to sell, well, have they? they? they, they <laughs> <laughs> they had registered trademarks for things like underwear yeah. and pyjamas. Oh, but, my but gosh. It was you really interesting, one. wasn't it? Because they tried to trademark Sussex Royal, mm -hmm. and there were always rumours that the Royal Sussex Hospital were the people that objected. It was never proved. Yeah. It was all suspected, it, wasn't it, it? Yeah, it was always suspected to be them. But I remember when that got set up, because it was to do with why they left the royal family. It was to do with their, like... The kind of stepping away from frontline royal hood, royal ship. I don't know what the word is, but royal <laughs> duties. Royal duties. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's been a long day. Um, yeah, I, and then they, they've now got this new thing set up, and they, and it just seemed to me like a lot of it is trying to say, "Hey, Netflix, please rehire us again," yeah. because th without that, I think they're in a lot of financial trouble. But who wants Jarmas of the Ginger Winger and me game? <laughs> hey, it's I mean, that's, that's like, like, that's that's like, like Disney. Disney. No. It's no terrible, ginger. isn't no it? Ginger prejudice, please. No, ginger no prejudice. I know, but, but that, that particular winter. But that Lois, Lois, <laughs> Lois, on a, on a really serious point, yeah. and something that really worried me mm. about all of this, can you imagine if the Biden family or the Trump family attempted to use the seal of the president of the yeah. United States yeah. of America on underwear and pajamas? The problem that really upsets me about these two is they don't seem to accept that Britain is a serious country and the monarchy is a serious institution. They just want to trade off it as much as possible. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the only reason they're known, the only reason anyone gives them the time of day is because of the things that they claim to hate. Yeah. Um, the the, Br really the British, the, the monarchy, um, our history, uh, and everything that you've just mentioned. I mean, imagine how awful... It's like if you've got a really famous parent, isn't it? But but time's a million and yeah. the royal family. You know, and only, only people only really want to talk to you because your mum's Vivian Westwood or your mum's there or your dad's that or whatever and you think oh I don't really want to mention it but every time you're on television it's mentioned you know yeah. I just, I just it's, it's ask, annoying I just want to ask Suzanne this question because this is the thing that really worries me look whatever these trashy per do is not of that much interest to me have they successfully persuaded the world that Britain is a very racist country? No, I don't think no. they have at all. I think they've persuaded the world that actually they're complete victim people who actually don't want to have a nice, quiet life and get on with their life. I think mm. they just want everybody to, to, to sort of think they're victims and persecuted, and that's what they're trading on, isn't it, really? 100%. I, I always go back to the... Um, and if you remember when William and Kate first became parents, they took a huge step back from royal mm -hmm. duties, didn't they? And the country went... Fair enough. You've yeah. just become mum and dad. Take some time. Be with the family. The country didn't say that. <laughs> no, 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 they did. Pete, no, Pete, they Pete, did. Pete, Pete, the people, Pete, the no. sensible people in this country did. Pete, Pete, you are. <laughs> it's the editor of the Mail on Sunday. Oh, no. He said, <laughs> sensible people. Not for one second did we let them two away with it. <laughs> I uh, said but Pete, sensible people. On a serious note, yeah. have they attempted to create Sussex.com to once again trade? off their royal titles. It is 100% true. It's absolutely true! <laughs> Suzanne. Yes. I'm going to read this question out as it's been written. All right. Don't have a go at me. Okay. <laughs> Transgender swimmer oh, Leah no. Thomas is taking legal action after she was banned from competing against women at the Olympics. Is it true or is it false? Well, it must be false because she's not a she. <laughs> See, I knew, I, I, can I tell I'm you something? Sorry. I knew Wait. she'd do that. Oh, yeah. I knew she'd do that. <laughs> this is not a woman. No. So if this was a genuine trans person, that's fine. No, you're right. She's, she's a chick with a dick. Isn't. 
Oh, thank you. You put yeah. it so much better than I could. Yeah, you put it so much better than I could. Yeah. Sorry. You know, and, and yeah, this is true, thankfully, because it about flipping time. Mm. Um, there is no place in women's sports for failed male athletes. No. I've got to be honest with you. Something that I heard about Leah Thomas and I hadn't realised is, first of all, this person has had no form of corrective surgery exactly. in any way. Well, so no, so, and I, I won't go into details. <laughs> but the other thing I hadn't realised, without being funny, I've not spent that much time in women's changing rooms. These, <laughs> no shit! Sadly, sadly. <laughs> sadly <laughs> but, but these women who get into these uh, swimming costumes have to really sort of shimmy into them. And can you imagine bobbing about like that with somebody who is a biological man? Just uh, biological like... man! <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> How dare you? OK, can you explain to me why it is reasonable <laughs> and why it's fur woke rabbit for somebody who literally is a, a six foot two person with a penis and testicles to compete <laughs> as a woman. I know plenty of six foot two women with penises and testicles, okay. thank you very much. I don't see what the problem is. They're all just women, it's all the same. We need to deal with your white privilege. I think he needs a biology lesson. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes it, it is. Yeah. And do you know, I, I think you're a bang on here. And I've been listening to Rayleigh Gaines, who is the uh, American swimmer who's been challenging this stuff mm. absolutely brilliantly. You know, this was kind of all forced on him because she, I get the feeling she never wanted to wander into this arena at all. But she was the one. She competed against Leah, um, Leah Thomas, and they ended. I didn't. I didn't realize this story. They ended up tying in a race, mm -hmm. and the the people who organized the race said that Leah Thomas had to be the one with the photos and, the, and get to keep the trophy, just because they were trans. And what I found staggering was that Rayleigh explained she was giving some testimony to something that the uh, that Leah Thomas, when competing as a man, was ranked about 400 yeah, in the male. Right. Like I said, and now... She, she, the, failed the male athletes. Su yeah. Su yeah. Suzanne, I don't know if you agree with me. I'm sure you do. But I feel so sad when I see these women and girls who are being so heavily discriminated against secretly having a fourth, fifth and sixth medal ceremony yeah. because they know they can't come first, yeah. second and third. And you just think to yourself, Aww. look... I was never any form of a feminist, right? I always thought it was a bit twee and a bit, you know, left-wing or whatever. I very definitely am now. Yeah. I feel that women had rights for five minutes and then they began yeah. evaporating. Mm. That's right. We've kind of gone back in time, I think, and it feels like we've got to fight for women's rights all over again. And I really look forward to the day when every single proper woman mm. who's been tranced by a man can have their proper medal ceremony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Every single man, trans man, that has won a female sporting event, yeah, that needs sorted. to be sorted, I've got, erased, I got rid of. Yeah. Like they do retrospective yeah. Olympic medals if they found yeah. out someone's been done for yeah. doping or whatever. I think, I think yes. the critical question we're all wondering is what Leah Thomas would do if she burnt a bra. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> no, It'd no. just be exactly the same. Just, there'd be no breast. Joke. Just to put the kind of court case into perspective. So basically, what happened in 2022, the World Aquatics Organization said uh, they kind of rescinded the kind of testosterone yeah. kind of barrier that they had as the kind of qualification thing, and just said anybody who had gone through male puberty was banned from competing in competitive really races. Right. Yeah. And the the thing that people have to remember with swimmers, it is much more about your kind of body shape, your bone density, yeah. your muscle density, all of those kind of things, much more than your testosterone level. And Leah Thomas has taken offence to this. And as we've said, they've had no te no um, testosterone things, no nothing like that. My little goddaughter uh, is not very little, actually. She's now 11 years old. And of course, <laughs> girls start puberty before boys. Yeah. I watched her in a swimming race against the boys and she just murdered <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, just really quickly, yeah, I want yeah. to go back to something you said about this incident in the changing rooms because Rayleigh Gaines was it was in the changing rooms when she when this happened, and what I think I found fascinating was the other swimmers were never once consulted that this was going to happen. Yeah. Okay, what happened? And I found that the lead time got changed oh, in I the see, changing yeah, rooms with tackle full tackle out. Mm. And they basically felt that if they'd said anything, mm. they'd be booted off the squad. Oh, they and, were told they were told they'd that, be. That was it. They were told they'd be thrown out yeah. of the university. I found it actually it's difficult. It's absolutely it's outrageous behaviour. No but anyway, Suzanne, Yes. and you can answer this whichever way you want, and, and I will arbitrate as to whether it's true <laughs> or false based on <laughs> what you say, but the question, as written, okay. is transgender swimmer Leah Thomas is taking legal action after she 
was banned from competing against women at the Olympics. You say it's false because it's not a she. She thinks she is a she, so it's true. Yeah. It's correct. It's <laughs> absolutely <laughs> true! <laughs> this is getting very confusing. Yeah, okay. It is very confusing. So to Lois, who is very definitely a woman, or at least she has been for the past few years. Well, okay. I was as quite female when I gave birth to my two children. <laughs> she's one of those old. Yeah, yeah. She's one of those old-fashioned women that I can know. give birth. Amazing, really. <laughs> it's so old hat nowadays, <laughs> exactly. aren't they? Oh, it's 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 very much yesterday's story, yeah, Lois. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so to Lois. Yes. The mayor of New York has announced he will be giving illegal migrants prepaid credit cards with $1,000 a month on them. It's going to cost the taxpayer $53 million. Is it true or is it false? Well, oh, my God. It, yeah, it's, pro it's probably true. But a good friend of mine who's in New York recently, mind you, he can be a bit tight, said that $1,000 won't, won't last them very long. Because <laughs> yeah. right. yeah. yeah. co a coffee is probably, yeah. like, at $10, $15, you know. But I'm, I'm not being funny, Lois, on? but you've, uh, you've been on this panel for some time. That's not what we were driving yeah. at. <laughs> I mean, if, if, if your comment on Saturday night on Talk TV is, well, a thousand dollars seemed a bit stingy to no, me. No, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I'm a woman of the people. I'm just talking about She's someone right, who. She's though. She I went to right. coffee yeah. in New York. I gave my daughter twenty dollars. She bought me a coffee and her a coffee. And Kat, I said, "Where's the change?" Oh, there wasn't any, Mummy. Actually, no, Su 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 Suzanne. Suzanne. I know it's not the issue. No, we're, we're not. We're doing the same thing. No, 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 no. Stop. <laughs> stop. Right. This is not a question about the value of $1,000. It's the question about illegal immigration. Yeah. Suzanne, yes. please. Yes, sorry. Right. Yes. So it's first... not like me not to want to no, talk about it. <laughs> right. It's your whole thing. The, the current level of the UK-US exchange rate is not the purpose of this question. You're going to have to very much get with the programme here. Okay. Now, now, Suzanne, and I want you to consider this very carefully, do you have a comment on illegal immigration? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, she yes, does. Yes, I do. Yeah. And, and I, I, I <laughs> must admit, this story had passed me by, mm. but it sounds just like the kind of idiotic woke thing that the mayor of New York might do. Yeah, uh, absolutely disgraceful. What does he want? More people to come over the border from Mexico? You know, on the one hand, Biden says he's trying to stop them, mm. although he doesn't seem to be doing very much about it. And then the ha mayor of New York's handing a hand out. Well, I mean, it's insane. Su Suzanne, you asked the question, and, and I forgive you if you don't have the answer, mm. What does he want? Because I can't understand this. Time and time again, we see in the United Kingdom... I mean, if you look at the Labour Party, the Labour Party's policy on immigration has smashed the skilled working class yeah. in Northern England. It has created very real poverty, both for the migrants and for Labour's core voters. Mm. And yet they seem to love it. Yeah, the, mayor of, the mayor of New York, I would have thought would have been absolutely desperate to avoid the housing crisis, which is being caused by illegal migration, but instead he's giving them all this money. So I don't know if you can tell me what you so think I, these people are trying to do. Perhaps he thinks it will stop them committing crimes. Perhaps it will make them think they won't steal if they've got money in their okay. pocket. Perhaps it means that they won't be sleeping on the streets, they can find a hotel or something. I, I have no idea what I think it's... Pete, 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 not gonna solve Pete the problem, I'm just going to ask you... <laughs> I'm just going to ask you this question. I don't disagree with Suzanne. How do you think it'll go? Uh, well, inviting, <laughs> inviting illegal migrants to New York and then paying them $1,000 not oh, to steal. Oh, God. It, well, I, it's going to be disastrous. That'll end well. It'll, it'll That'll end, end well, wasn't it? But it's interesting you say, what does he want? Because the problem of this chap is he seems to say one thing one day and another thing another day. Because... I remember a couple of years ago, he was like, everybody come in, New York is the home of immigrants and all the rest of it. Mm. And he was due to have a meeting with Biden to basically say, please close the southern border because New York can't handle this yeah, anymore. No more, and then suddenly that meeting got suspiciously cancelled and now he's on about giving them prepaid credit cards. Might, Pete, do you think it might be a bit of re reverse racism? You know, that, that they, you know... He, he feels that the people that vote for him, the working class New Yorkers, shouldn't have to do certain jobs. Do you know so I, let's let people in who aren't supposed to be here, not really, I to do the really, jobs that they won't, but, you know, they shouldn't have to do. And to be honest, good. Lois, I actually think the reality is here is I think it's dirty Democrat politics that's actually going on here because I, I have no doubt that the mayor of New York coming out blasting Biden for doing nothing on the southern border in an election year is not going to win him any favours. And I wonder if somebody in the back, in one of these back Backroom people need to be more has suddenly said, don't do that or we're going to start putting Pete. funding and, oh, and support Pete. from you. And this is where this policy is coming from. Pete, listen, you can do that very easily. 
Biden will forget you've said yeah. it. <laughs> He's going, Biden's a disgrace. Uh, what did you say? Joe uh, so Biden is the best president of this side of the millennium. Where do you keep coming from? <laughs> do, you know, do, you know, do you know what? We've given him an expanded role now. It's the woke <laughs> rabbit, right? Do me a favour, woke He's rabbit. Say what life. you need to say and get lost. A thousand dollars isn't enough. It's actually a racist amount of money. <laughs> for once, <laughs> for once, this British government has got our refugee policy absolutely correct. Five star hotels. This is what they ought to do in New York as well. How big is your trust fund, woke <laughs> rabbit? Yeah. Look, it's not really your business, but I am loaded. <laughs> <laughs> White privilege, get lost. Yeah. That was the woke rabbit. I've had enough of the woke yeah. rabbit. Yeah, I have. Yeah. I'll tell you what we're experimenting with this week. The producer's allowing him to come in without oh. me inviting him. We'll get rid of that. Yeah. He's sort of that. creeping yeah. around like Biden, yeah. you know, and like he... sort of licking people's ears. Oh. It's only if they're kids, obviously. <laughs> You'll be wearing Prince Harry's underwear next. No, no, just yeah. Yeah. But, um... I'd pay not to see that. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'd pay. I'd pay to see Biden sniff Markle's hair, see what happens. Oh. It would be superb. Well, but interesting. Would be Do you do you want to know where these migrants keep coming from? It seems to be the Texas governor, Governor Abbott, is putting them all on coaches and shipping them up to New York, basically because obviously Texas and the southern state borders, uh, border states can't handle any more people. What's he's going on? What's and he's basically saying, on? do you know what, if you want them, you have them. I'll tell, and I'll I tell you actually what, think it's brilliant. I saw the same thing with the SNP in Scotland. Yeah, do you know what? I, 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 why why the government hasn't they? done that, I don't understand. It's Rwanda. So they they want to be all welcoming. You I take. Saw, I saw a very similar thing with the leader of Hammersmith and Fulham Council a few years ago who <laughs> said, we don't need poor people in Hammersmith and Fulham. After all, we're conveniently located next to Lambeth. <laughs> <where they laughs> <laughs> It's the leader of Lambeth Council. He says, how dare you? How dare you? How dare you? Yeah, but they all vote for you. Yeah. OK, so, uh, Lois, has yes. the mayor of New York given $1,000 to every single illegal migrant? Is it true or is it false? For 10 cups of coffee, it's a true. It's absolutely <laughs> true! That was The Woke That Was continues after the break. Welcome back to That Was The Woke That Was. The former deputy leader of the Green Party has been awarded £9,000 after he was sacked for saying, wait for it, <laughs> biology is real. <gasps> yeah, this is a great story. I love this story. <laughs> so it's absolutely true. So basically... but before you start, I just want to ask you, yeah. do you believe biology is real? I think biology is very real. I, I, I'm yeah, convinced even though myself. I haven't even I'm... got the O level. Oh, yeah. I'm sure <laughs> I haven't I'm got an O level. Real. <laughs> you, it, 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 but, but look, but look it, it's also like, like antimatter. I don't need to own it to know it exists. Yeah. Right? But it's a bit like the whole... These are the same people that would have said, trust the science during COVID. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's it, so it, The woke karate, the things, the pick and mix of things, it all contradicts yeah. each other. So, Suzanne, so Suzanne, Suzanne, just to be clear, what's happened here is a clash on the political left between people who support women mm -hmm. and people who support... Uh, trans women, well, you're going to correct me on the language, but tell us what you think. So basically what happened is that the, the former deputy leader of the Green Party, Dr Shara Ali, um, took the party to court because they sacked him from his job um, and he, they described him, he described it as a fanatical clampdown on legitimate debate by trans rights activists, took Pretty the Green fine. Party to court and won. Yeah. And good, right. for him. Good. good for him. Yeah. And frankly, we need more people to do this. I and agree. I'm really pleased to see there have actually been quite a spate of cases recently good. where mm. it has now, I think, been pretty well, Toby much, Young's much shown um, by free the speech union has been funding a lot of stuff. Can I, can yeah, I, can it's, I... It's, I think it's now the case. I think it's pretty well established now that gender critical beliefs, as they're so yeah, called, okay. are now can a I, protected. Can I challenge you? Yeah, Suzanne, can I challenge you for a second? Because, look, <laughs> I personally, look, I've got my own views on trans. I disagree with a lot of people. I think that if you've had some sort of corrective surgery, you should be given special status. Some people yeah, disagree with that. I always want to try and be polite and, and generous with people. Is there not an argument for just saying, oh, just get on with it and just leaving these people to it? If they want to run around in a frock and think they're a woman, no, just leave no, them to it. Yeah, oh. A man wants to wear a frock, I don't care. Yeah. I went through a phase and I like to wear men's clothes. Didn't make me trans, didn't no. make me gay, didn't make me a man, mm. whatever. But I, I just enjoyed it. It's quite nice wearing trousers and a tie. I'm quite envious. Uh, <laughs> Pete, Pete, what about... You know, I think anyone can wear whatever they want, pretty much. But I think there's got to be a limit. So it's like these kids, you know, that want to be a cat. 
So yeah. that's fine. They can pretend to be a cat, but when you tell them, when they come to school, you either say, "Well, there's a litter tray," or out the door. Yeah. What about what about those they those can't go competitive cat racing? What about those? What? Th no, I'm just saying. What did you, you make that up? Yeah, I did. Please don't make that up. <laughs> what about what about what about those primary school kids in Scotland who protested the fact they weren't allowed to wear shorts at playtime to play football? And so all turned up in a skirt because they were allowed yeah. under the dress code. <laughs> yeah. Although I've yeah, got to be honest with you, that would have been fine if it had been Northern Ireland, uh, England or Wales. But obviously in Scotland, it's called a kilt and it's an entirely yeah. appropriate yeah. piece of dress anyway. So the, the thing I would say though, just picking up, I, I, again, I'm a designer. Once you get to the age of 18, you do you. I generally don't care. You say on one side How of the road... How does that involve... What's that involve, doing you? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a few more of these by the looks of it. But by the way, Pete, I did want to ask you this question. Um, my good friend Matthew Barber from the Thames Valley Police yeah. has rebuked his own force oh, this yes. week. Oh, yeah. Because oh, there, was, there was somebody who committed a sex crime and the Thames Valley Police described it as a lady. He said, no, I just want to confirm it's a man. I've got to be oh, honest with you. Good. The fact that that... Uh, was yeah. an issue, really shocks me. And what yeah. he said was, if you're a law-abiding citizen, that's fine, but in the case of sex crime, yeah. to misgender and somebody... I, I think, and this is the point where the kind of live and let live, has there has to be a line that's to that. Difference. So, yeah. Suzanne, has uh, the former deputy leader of the Green Party sued the Green Party for basically denying biology? Is it true or is it false? Good man, it's true. Yeah, It's absolutely true! <laughs> OK. Lois. Yes. The National Trust... I mean, this is often true if it's the National yeah, Trust. Definitely, definitely, but OK. Yeah. The National Trust <laughs> has banned Valentine's Day events this year after complaints from asexual staff. Is it true <laughs> or is it false? Well, you know, I thought the, uh, the National Trust was all about preserving our heritage. If you're only hiring asexual staff, there's not going to be any heritage. There won't be any more people. I've got to There'll be honest... There'll be no procreation, will there? They seem to be very divided over a more traditionalist sense of what we think the National Trust is, is like looking after historic homes and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. and, a look, and, it and it's kind of a new version of it where it's much more woke and it wants to talk about slavery and it wants to talk about colonialization, all these kind of things, which apparently to most of its reports gets shockingly and accurately run wrong. Uh, but it's interesting that Keir Starmer brought the National Trust up because the Conservatives, the Conservative MPs had a pop at the National Trust over this like obsession with slavery and all the rest of it. And Kirsten was using it as kind of the Tories at war with itself and, you know, the Tories at war with, um, you know, English heritage and other... I was like, Kit, that's just not the point. And it's, again, another bit of where you can't trust well, Kirsten. We, are, we are sat... We are sat very near uh, uh, Guy's and Thomas's hospital. Mm. Uh, Thomas Guy endowed the hospital yeah. um, and there is a statue of him. Now, I will tell you that I have a friend of mine who was in a meeting uh, in that hospital to discuss their vision statement, their mission... Mm. I've got to be honest with you, I think that's a bit of a waste of time. Can I tell you, what was discussed was a full apology for slavery. Yeah. Now, I will tell you, the trust that Thomas Guy set up not only wants to demolish his statue for being a slave master, which he wasn't, by the way, uh, but also they have stopped funding by majority uh, medical uh, care and instead they have started focusing on things like gender recognition, oh anti-racism, because they go, they go, the way that we'll have a more healthy society is anti-racism. The problem we're having with all this, Suzanne, yeah. I'm going to say this, every organisation that is not explicitly right-wing mm. becomes left-wing in the end. Mm. The National Trust is not interested in running heritage, it's interested in kicking in Middle England. Well, mm. it's quite interesting. The National Trust has been under some pressure mm. from a group called Restore, Restore Trust, Trust. who are trying called. to take the National Trust away from all this woke stuff and back to its traditional mm. roots of looking after ancient buildings. Um, so the National Trust is feeling the pressure a bit. So last week it had loads of editorial mm. in all the national newspapers, plus giving away free passes, saying, mm. no, we're not woke at all. No, absolutely not. We care for buildings. And what happened the following week? They signed up to a report that said the countryside was overprivileged. I, yes, white we talked and about racist. Week, and I yeah. thought, you've just completely destroyed the PR. So, yeah, Lois, exactly. Lois, Lois yeah. let, me, let me ask you this question. Um, so, we've had a Conservative government in one way or another for mm -hmm. quite some time now, and we're about to get to the point in the cycle where Labour are probably going to win. Mm. All of these quangos, all of these organisations dominated by blurites, dominated by leftists, have, can you, as an intelligent, well-read uh, political contributor, name one example 
of anyone appointed to a quango under this Conservative government who was an actual Conservative. Well, no, it's very interesting you say that. How many can you name? One. Who? <laughs> it's the strictest head teacher lady, which used to be the social oh, mobility yeah. czar. They, they fired her. They, but they fired her. Toby Young. <laughs> yeah, Toby Young. Toby, Toby Young, who was fired. Yeah. Was for <laughs> and also one of, one. Our, one of our regular guests, um, Daniel Hodson, a former CEO of Life, who oh, I had lunch with yesterday, he said that he was nearly appointed to historic royal palaces. So, again, another nearly conservative But what happens? Appointed. What happens with these quangos is as follows. The people that recruit for them say, what we really need is diversity. So if you write, uh, well, I'm uh, interested in getting on the National Trust because I had a construction company with 300 members of staff and I understand historic buildings because I'm a member of the Master uh, Stonemasons Guild or whatever. Much better you, if you're one-legged lesbian. You will not, you will <laughs> not get it if you write... As a lesbian, I understand <laughs> the discrimination against people in historic buildings. That's how you'll get it. Yeah. And the reality is, time and time again, executive power is being handed to these absolute lunatics. And the Conservative Party's done nothing about nothing. it. Nothing. It's had since 2010 yeah. to put its own people, yeah. to put people who are more sensible in these positions. OK. They've not done it. So, Lois. Yeah. So, Lois. <laughs> I think it's a tough one, actually. <laughs> uh, has the National Trust banned Valentine's Day because of asexual people? Is it true or is it false? Do you know what? Not... I... I I like the National Trust, I'm a member of the National Trust. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, actually, and say that it's false. It's absolutely false! <laughs> OK, so, Pete. Yes. The animal rights charity, PETA, yeah. has said British fairgrounds should stop using horses on carousels because it encourages exploitation of horses. <laughs> is it true or is it false? So do the plastic horses encourage exploitation oh of real horses. Do you know, I'm quite a well-respected person <laughs> outside of the studio, and every time I come in here, I can't tell if I'm being treated like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I actually don't know the answer to this. Do you know something, Pete? <laughs> do you know something, Pete? <laughs> I looked into your eyes there and something died <laughs> inside. It did. <laughs> it did. A small part of me just died with that question. Is it, is it as bad? <laughs> is it as bad as when I asked you the question, have Peter said that we shouldn't eat oysters <laughs> live yeah. because they have feelings as well. Yeah. They don't have a brain or a nervous system. <laughs> they literally can't possibly have well, feelings. And once you cut that bit out, they're dead anyway. Yeah, they're dead yeah, anyway. Yeah. But no, honestly, the problem, the thing with Peter is that they are eco fanatics. They are, are right on the far edges of Sanity. known universe yeah. at this point. It is, it is ridiculous that anybody ever gives this organization any airtime or any amount of, cre of credibility. I mean, I'm all for animal rights, I'm all for the protection of animals, like everybody in this yeah. country is. But I swear, these groups have to stop. And what I want to see happen is these more moderate groups come out and say, stop talking. They, this is, And I, I go back to a point that you made previously about groups that aren't explicitly right-wing always become left-wing. I think there is a lack of onus now on more moderate groups right across these kind of social issues to actually say, stop talking nonsense because you're putting people off the causes. And I think I've, and I've said this time and time and time again, social mobility, social, mo social movements must be saved from their friends before they're saved from their enemies. And yeah, when it comes to this, I, I, it's, it has to be true because it's Peter and the morons. Okay, Peter, are morons. <laughs> We've got it from Peter. <laughs> right, OK. So, Woke Wabbit, let me tell you something. I love animals. They're delicious. <laughs> right. So what? Peter are 100% correct. We need to see more non-human animals in positions of power. Pardon? Non-human Well, Caligula <laughs> promoted his horse. Incitatus, that was his name. Oh, well done. How did you know uh, the name of the horse? Know that? I studied classics. <laughs> so, oh, he's yeah. that, that. I mean, I'm not being funny, Woke Wabbit. What do your parents <laughs> actually <laughs> think of you? You studied classics at the University of London and now you're dressed up in that. They're hugely proud. Look, I, I get to do protesting and, and reading and attacking you and. <laughs> oh, no, the big God. Right, get rid of him. Get rid of him. <laughs> OK. <laughs> It teaches children that animals are just there for our exploitation sorry, rather I, than... I, no, sorry. I presume that'll be their argument. I'm not agreeing with no, it. No, they but... put us in a spin. Get it? Yeah. Spin. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, it's just a publicity <laughs> stunt. If this is true, and I don't know whether it's true or not, this has got to be just a publicity stunt, because how can a plastic horse possibly be exploited? Oh, yeah, I, I, I love those idea. carousels. Yeah. The only fairground ride I like, because they're kind of quite cosy and... Right. Hello. Okay. We've yeah. we, we've wandered <laughs> slightly. I'm not yeah. on the big. So so here is more like a bothering you. So here is here is 
So here is the question. <laughs> so here is the question, Pete. Hello. Right, so, Pete, this is without doubt the craziest thing <laughs> we have ever, ever suggested has. on this show. <laughs> and I'll read it back to you. Yeah. Have the animal rights charity, Peter, said that British fur ground rides made of plastic horses <laughs> encourage <laughs> discrimination <laughs> against horses? Is it true or is it false? It's got, I, I'm just going to have to say true. I'm going to have to. I am absolutely shocked. It's true! That is nonsense. Uh, what I invite you to not do now is try and explain the rationale behind no, that. Because no no. we, we've only got limited time on the show. So to Suzanne. Oh, right. The army is going to relax security checks on recruits in an attempt to boost diversity. So at the moment, mm. they're concerned there's a lack of rapists, murderers <laughs> and thieves. And she had so it. Now, but, but look, I've got to be honest with you, uh, Suzanne. I'm going to ask you this straight out. Being in the army is about being aggressive, right? I think actually well, it, it depends denigrates. On what job, it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but there's it, lots of it, jobs you can do. They don't it, all need aggression. But, it, but, but it, de yeah. it, it denigrates these people if they're associated with criminality. I always think, yeah, like and I actually content. think that having high standards of propriety shows that they are different to common criminals. Yeah, I'm just I'm, this is astonishing, isn't it? Because I, I, I know, yeah, this is true. Um, and what they're doing is relaxing security checks to boost, as you say, diversity. But for goodness sake, they're going to, they've also said they're going to be putting some of these people in positions where they have access to state yeah, secrets. In the office, of course. It's not just that they're having them doing minor jobs. Uh, I don't know, in the Laundry Corps or something. No. We're talking the about the Laundry, laundry Corps. Corps. <laughs> Sorry, Suzanne, Suzanne. No, I'm sorry, there is a Laundry Corps. Sure there no, is. No, no Suzanne, Corps. Suzanne. Let's be honest. Do you remember the British Army tagline used to be, be the best? It just seems to be be the best if you tick one of these boxes. Yeah. But what be I your best <laughs> true self. Be, yeah. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I see Frank's joined the army then. I don't know why Frank did it. Remember yeah, that? I remember that as well. <laughs> but no, this is the bit where woke really, really concerns me because yeah. it's now it's infecting dangerous. in our national security. Yeah. Yeah. And this is when it gets dangerous. Like we joke around, like obviously we just had the yeah. Peter question and all the rest of it. And it seems a bit silly. This stuff yeah. isn't silly, because yeah. like as Suzanne says, that these people have the potential to have access to a kept secrets, to national yeah. security yeah. secrets, and to plans and all the rest of uncontrolled access. access. To secret and access that is deeply, rights. deeply yes. concerning. Basically, what they want to do is reduce the security checks uh, to get more people into the in particular into the officer corps because it said people that are coming into the country that's the bit where they all fall like, they all fall down mm -hmm. but um there's a re there's a reason that security check is there if you can justify why an individual say where they've gone through the check and say well they're not quite qualified it seems to be that you have to have been a resident for five years mm -hmm. that seems to be the reason they, uh, Pete, they Pete, don't pass Pete, but, Pete. yeah Pete, is there an end to this? Yes, there is. I mean, <laughs> honestly. I'm on, doing the news it's like, bit. It's like sitting with Viscount Moncton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're five being, years this. You're being rabbit folk. Oh, no. <laughs> we need I mean, more rabbits. I it? think you want me to talk some more about the black and tan no, to no, make it up. Right, right. No, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to say this straight out. It's Saturday <laughs> night. We've had, we've had five years recruitment for new <laughs> red, <laughs> bloody black and tan. And the laundry corps. Oh, the laundry, 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 laundry corps. Corp. Do you understand what they do? To my people in the army, and now we've got you. now we've <laughs> got that anything. we've got that absolute nightmare kicking off. Go away, go away. Well, I'll do to you what I did to Mizzy. Um, oh. Okay. What part? So I will give you a bonus point if you can tell everyone what military rank I hold uh, in the United States of America. I think you're a lieutenant colonel, aren't you? Crumbs. He is a colonel. Gosh, uh, a colonel. Something like that. So isn't unbelievably. It? Yeah. Unbelievably, like I am a colonel, colonel, a genuine military colonel in the state militia of Kentucky. The other holder of it you will know is Harlan Sanders, who got it for chicken frying. <laughs> but <laughs> believe it or not, last Remembrance Sunday, friends of mine went, well, as a military officer yourself, you should wear the uniform. I'm not <laughs> turning up <laughs> on Remembrance Sunday. Andre, yes. are, you, are you finger licking good? Don't worry, they edited that out. Okay. So, Suzanne, <laughs> the army, are they going to relax security checks? Is it true or is it false? I, I hope they don't, but I think at the moment they're going to, so it's true. It's absolutely true! <laughs> that was The Woke That Was continues after the break. 
Welcome back to That Was The Woke That Was. Uh, the Labour Party candidate for Rochdale is a crazy conspiracy theorist <laughs> who claims Israel was behind the Hamas oh attacks. My God. My oh God. God. Yeah. This story has been the best thing that... It's got I've it all, been. hasn't it? It's got it all. <laughs> if you're a political nerd, this is the story of all stories. Because one that is 100% true, he's been saying that basically Israel allowed itself to be attacked. Uh, it's a complete nonsense story. But what it turns out, he's been saying this stuff for ages. You know, and that, and that, yeah. that's that's he's caught in a in a in a recording. So basically, saying I'm going to say this, he's still got to run. So what's going to happen is if he wins, is he's going to get to Parliament and he's immediately going to have the Labour whip withdrawn, yeah. which I think is unprecedented. I don't think that's ever I, happened I before. Can't, I can't. Do you know somebody you asked me this in the office I'm sure uh, the other day, been. and I honestly I couldn't give them an answer, no. but I, maybe somebody at home could tweet me and tell me. I don't think it has. But, uh, but, but so 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 <laughs> so, <laughs> so Pete, I want you to think about this. <laughs> So the question is, yeah. has anybody entered Parliament and had the whip withdrawn immediately? Pete says, I wonder if somebody can tweet me. <laughs> How many people do you think <laughs> are going to get in touch, Pete? <laughs> well, give out your Twitter just in case. Yeah. Go on. I'm probably quite a few, I imagine. But no. no. How about none? <laughs> How about none? But, Su but Suzanne, Suzanne, look, the thing that worries me is this. I always feel that there's been a whiff within the Labour Party, not of being deliberately anti-Semitic right at the top in the case of Keir Starmer, but just seeing it as part of the business model. Well, you know, there are a lot of local Labour parties across the country who are very, very comfortable with ethnic politics, with racism, with, with social and ethnic division, all the stuff that really we don't want as a country. Well, I don't know about a whiff, but I think when it comes to that kind of appeasement of some other elements mm, of the community, it it's not been a whiff, it's been an overwhelming stench. Yeah, yeah you're right, yeah. it really has. And I hate to say that, but, but it's the absolute truth. I mean, the fact is, this candidate was allowed to spout all this stuff before he was selected yep. as the Labour candidate. Yeah. People knew what his opinions were. Yeah. He'd said it before and he'd said, I'm going to say it. Yeah. Uh, he, you know, the, and I thought, I thought by the way, I thought and that... And they still chose him as the yeah. Labour uh, candidate. Louise That's... Elman, um, who, by the way, you know, was a great member of Parliament. I don't know if she's still there, but um, obviously Jewish and, and from Liverpool. I actually thought that she disgraced herself. And I'll tell you why she disgraced herself. Mm. The fact that this man had been friends with her for many years makes absolutely no what difference man? when he's peddling this conspiracy uh, theory. Yeah. It's absolutely despicable. You know, we've heard it all before. The Jews did 9-11. Yeah, the yeah. Jews were responsible for this. Oh, Auschwitz, you know, fake this Auschwitz, sort, Auschwitz. This sort of thing is incredibly the, dangerous. The thing that really struck me about this is the reaction of Labour's top team and Keir Starmer. Mm. I mean, he was AWOL for, like, 48, 48 hours hour, yeah. for him to be... And then he did a... a stupid little Sky News interview in a f abandoned football stadium for some apparent reason, <laughs> saying, I took decisive action. 48 hours after the incident came out. That is not decisive action. And I've said this for a very long time now. Keir Starmer has not changed the Labour Party no. in any meaningful way. What Keir Starmer is very good at, and his team is very good at, is stage management. Do you know, do you know I'm going to... One second gonna... on it, one second on it. They are very, very good at keeping the crazies <clears throat> away from the TV cameras. Okay. They're very, very good at framing things so it looks like Keir has tried to do something, when in reality, he has done absolutely nothing to tackle this I, issue. I've got, I'm going I'm to put that to you, Suzanne. I remember reading Margaret Thatcher's book and she said she never had any respect for Neil Kinnock because what he was doing was fundamentally disreputable. Mm. And it was this, that his job was to try and pretend the Labour Party was something different to what the Labour right. Party actually was. You know, at the end of the day, Keir Starmer's job is to get these people elected mm. uh, without people knowing what they'll get up to if they get into government. Well, I think... <sighs> Well, I could say, that, I suppose, actually, that a lot of Tories are pretending to be Tories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but then, you know, what happened to the... Yeah, but, the, yeah, but, yeah, but in... in, in, in well, that should be turning in her... Well, no, no, in, in, in fairness, let me just say this. Uh, you know, if the Conservative Party did what they're meant to do, we would be very pleased. If we, Labour Party does what it's meant to do, we've got real problems. Yeah, well, so in this case, I think Keir Starmer absolutely did not handle it well at all. He should have been straight out of the blocks yeah. condemning this guy uh, and, and saying, I think you should resign. I mean, has anybody in the Labour Party said, resign? I don't actually know. Good ballot. question. Your I, OK, OK, I so, so Lois... But resign. No, I... No. OK, so Lois... Have yes. they? I think we all know the answer to this question, but there is a follow-up. It's a bonus question. A bonus Bonus. Question. Bonus question. OK. Has Azhar Ali 
been given his own show <laughs> on BBC Radio Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's Iranian state TV. Right? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who funded his campaign? Alle <laughs> probably, <laughs> allegedly, no. They Do you know what? I went, I went on Iranian state TV once and, oh, no. <laughs> and the bloke said to me, Britain is uh, running nuclear weapons around the world. And I went, well, you say you don't spy on our nuclear weapons technology. And he went, I Googled it. <laughs> <laughs> Never invited back. The thing is, anyway. though, just look at the numbers. I mean, you know, it, well, you've got 200,000 Jews, you've got 4 million Muslims. Yeah. You know, they, they are going to be pandering. They are going to be pandering to Muslims. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to say, before we go any further, the problem here is that we're pandering to extremists. Yeah, yeah. I've got a large number of Muslim friends who yeah, are as anti the extremists. extremists as we are. So let's look at the Rochdale by-election candidates list in full. Azhar Ali is the Labour Party candidate. The official support has been withdrawn. Mark Coleman is an independent. Simon Danchuk is for Reform UK. Ian Donaldson is the Liberal Democrat. Paul Allison is the Conservative Party candidate. George Galloway for the Workers' Party of Britain. Michael Howarth is an independent. William Howarth is also an independent. Guy Otten is for the Green Party. And Ravin Sabatna is the official monster raving loony party candidate joined by David Tully, an independent. Has it just been a complete disaster in Rochdale? It has. It's, it's, true. it's absolutely <laughs> true! <laughs> the Scottish National Party has said that the internet is racist <laughs> because it's dominated by white people. Is it true or is it false? Oh, Christ alive. What are they going to think of the dark web then? <laughs> <laughs> In the words of Roy Walker, it's coming ready in the ready money round. Oh, really? <laughs> it's it's coming thick and fast. Right. Um, oh, my God. Uh, why is the internet apparently racist? Can you elaborate more on the story? Or, well, or... the story's false, so... Yeah. I mean, okay. <laughs> right, really fine, but I'll tell you what I can ask you. <laughs> I can ask you whether what's happened in Scotland recently is just evidence that the SNP is going to collapse. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Um, you know, uh, my... Understanding and from polling that I've seen is that the SNP is going to be wiped out. Labour's <laughs> obviously going to do extremely well, um, and there'll probably be a couple of right. Tours. By the way, by the way, Pete is, is, is literally <laughs> choking. <laughs> right, and we're right. talking about the SNP. Right. The problem. <laughs> the problem here is this. Problem is, first of all, I don't know what the rabbit put in the water. <laughs> Actually, I do. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, but Pete, what made me laugh about that? The minute somebody misquoted an opinion <laughs> poll, you almost choked to death. Choked to death. <laughs> right, Pete. Now bear in no. mind. No. <laughs> well, not quite. No. Long. Now bear in mind it's Saturday night. All right, okay, okay. Can okay. you give us a quick pricey, <laughs> a quick pricey yeah. of the opinion poll? Okay, so okay. as long as you, you you're right to a degree. It's the owner of a company, a polling yeah. company that told me it, not just okay, some so random. Well, yeah, yeah. Right. So what, well, basically, what we're seeing in the polling is that yes, that there has been a huge shortening between Labour and the SNP, and the SNP are going to lose. Pretty quite a few seats. So actually, the thing you that, are confirming the thing, what the, the thing with the, why the SNP won't collapse is if you actually look at what the ranking issues are for Scottish voters, independence still ranks in the top four of their most important things, no, and that, that is what is going to keep the SNP alive. That is why that if you what we're going to see over the next six or seven months is everything will be independence, 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 mm -hmm. because it's the only thing that they've got to keep them going. Has the Scottish National Party said the internet is racist? Is it true or is it false? Well, based on the fact that you just told me, my love, that it was false, <laughs> I'm going to say <laughs> false! It's absolutely false! Yay! Yay! Oh, it's not you, the SNP of that man. Uh, the Labour Party will ban energy drinks for kids if they get into power. Is it true or is it false? I just want to ask you, Pete, there's a cost of living crisis. Net zero is destroying our economy and we're heading for war with both Russia and China and Iran. Has Keir Starmer focused on energy drinks? <laughs> uh, he has, I'm afraid, and this is true, but I would also remind people that the government said they were going to ban energy drinks for under 16 year olds in 2019 and has yet to do it. This yeah, is not, really this is a regurgitation of a, of a Tory policy. This is nothing new. All the science seems to be in favour of it. There's high in caffeine, there's, they're not they're high in sugars, they lead to anxiety. They're pretty terrible drinks that people do, under the age of 16 shouldn't be drinking, and people over the age of 16 really shouldn't be drinking anyway. Oh, I anyway. love them. I keep I one, can't I'm sorry. Stand no, them. I keep <laughs> one in my car. I do lots of driving, lots of long journeys, and if I start to feel so, I just have a... If I can't stop, I'll have a...
As a mother, are you concerned about energy <laughs> drinks? <laughs> I'm just, waste, I'm just wasting my time here, aren't I? I'm just um, absolutely as, as a, as a wasting mother, my time. As a mother, um, the, the only time that I consume energy drinks is when, um, you know when it's OK to drink alcohol in the morning? You know when you go to Ibiza? No, it's never <laughs> OK to drink alcohol No, but you know morning. when you go to Ibiza oh, and actually, it's a weather spoon and everyone's having a cooked breakfast and vodka Red Bulls and it's 6am and the flight's at 8am? No. Has Keir Starmer focused on energy drinks this week. <laughs> is it true or is it false? It's true. OK, so now something that I desperately do not want to do. I'm going to ask for the final <laughs> scores Yay! from the Woke Wabbit! Yay! OK, Woke Wabbit, bear in mind you're being paid to be here. <laughs> Can you tell me what the actual scores are? Yes, but before I do, the prize this week is a month's free swimming lessons with Leah Thomas. <laughs> no, the prize this week is a lovely soup. There we go. Uh, <laughs> yes, for those of you watching, it's Jamaican cock soup. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So, Woke Wabbit, who is the winner of this lovely soup product? <laughs> Lois is on three points. Pete is on zero points. And Suzanne is on a thousand points. <laughs> So, thank you so much to Lois Perry. Thank you so much to Pete Barnes, and congratulations to Suzanne Evans, who gets to taste the cock soup tonight. I'm off now to give Pete a lovely kiss, because I got him with the cake last week. Until next week, goodbye. Hey. <laughs>